Uchuva utfila utstakam avirin et roa hagzera. Repentance, prayer, righteous deeds overcome the severeness of the decree. Chuva is our own inner work. We're like that archer with the words. We recalibrate in our minds where we've missed the mark and how we can be more purposeful, more mindful in how we use our words, our deeds, and open our heart. Tefillah is between us and God, in which we tap our deepest yearnings to express and even surprise ourselves. Utstaka and acts of justice, that's between us and other people, with ourselves, with God, and reaching out. A favorite story about tzedakah, also from Eastern Europe. The story is told, you know, there was a time in Eastern Europe where Jews would be taken captive. It was, um, sadly, it's still something that goes on around the world. People are taken hostage for a ransom. And it was a responsibility of the entire community to try and raise the money to be able to redeem a captive. Maimonides said that it was among if not the highest mitzvah of community. And so there was this man who was in a town and held for a ransom. And they fundraised in their little community, but the amount was too great. They couldn't do it. So two of the leaders, two of the rabbis, went to a, a neighboring town. And they went to the synagogue and they said, we have this problem, we have this person who's unable to find his freedom to regain his family. To, is there anybody in your town who has real resources? Somebody who could help? And they said, you know, we're really a poor town just as you are, but there is one man in the town who's really quite wealthy, but he's a miser. Frankly, we don't know of anybody he's ever given money to. So they said, you know, well, how do we go? How do we find him? So they gave him directions. It was winter. It was Poland. And they came to his door and they knocked. And he opened the door and he was very gracious. He said, I've never seen you before. Where are you from? And they said, we're from a, a neighboring town and it's really cold outside. Could we come in and just warm up with your fire? And he said, of course, come on in. And he sat them down in front of the fire. And he even said, would you like something to drink? And but he, of course, he meant, you know, a little sliver of it, something significant. So he gave him a drink and they're looking at each other like, this seems like a nice man. And then if they got a little comfortable, they said, well, let me tell you why we came to your town. We came because in our little village, we didn't have enough money to redeem a captive from among us, from among the Jewish people. And we thought, maybe we heard that you were a man of means. Maybe you could make a difference for another Jew in the world. And then his whole complexion, his whole expression changed. He got up from his seat and he said, you came here on false pretenses. You didn't come in for a little warmth at my fire. You came in to try and get some money out of me. How dare you lead me on? Why didn't you just leave? And one man, the, the one man said, you won't even give, you won't give us anything? And he saw a rusty coin a kopeck, one kopeck. He took it and he slid it toward the door and he said, chase that out. Well, he went over as they're leaving you. The other rabbi picks it up. He turns around and he said, thank you. Thank you for this coin. If everybody gave something the way you just did, there would be a possibility of redemption. And they began to walk. And before they got past the front the man's 
called after them, come back in. And they returned, and he reached into a drawer, and he gave them now a, you know, like a dollar. And the man who had thanked him now was profuse with his praise. You didn't need to bring us back and to open your warmth to the cold outside. This dollar is a hundred times what you gave before. If everybody would increase what they gave, imagine. And they left. But before they got, you know, out of reach, the guy called them back. And it happened over and over. And before they knew it, they left and they had all the money they needed. Now, the, the first fellow who said, can't you give us anything? He turned to his friend. He said, what happened? Do you know he was insulting? He, he was insulting you and you were praising him. How did that happen? That after all those insults, we wound up with all of this uh, resources. He said, it's very simple. It's with genuine gratitude. You see, his heart was very closed. And so all he could do was throw a penny. But it was a spark. And by knowing genuinely, sincerely, it was appreciated that spark was fanned into something a little brighter and a little brighter. And before you knew it, he became aware of how good it feels to make a difference. It's with that patience and love and his generosity that we're able now to go back home and make a difference. Now, I tell that story because it's one of my favorite fundraising stories. <laughs> because it's a reminder that it's not an expectation that people should give because that's not fair to people. People don't owe others in that way. But what I like about this story is that we all know, I know for myself, I could be more generous. I'm busy, you never know where you need your money. And so I identify with this story because it's a story ultimately about love to fan a flame and trust. Uchuva utfila utstaka. It is with our own character development, chuva. Tfila, refined by seeing ourselves before God, that we are then led to an open heart that gives tzedakah. And that's a setup for our president to give us an opportunity.